It's funny how one small decision that seems kind of innocent in the past can actually set the way your life goes for the rest of it. Now, if you've been watching the Donkey Kong Country LP I've been doing, I mentioned in that that my parents tried to get me Donkey Kong Country for my birthday one year, but they couldn't find it. It was sold out. So instead, they picked up two cheaper games for me. Arrow the Acrobat and this game, The Lion King. Now, the thing with both of those games is that they are nowadays at least known as notoriously difficult games but i never really got why this one was considered hard now i struggled as a kid to play it uh but as an adult i haven't found it that bad i don't know if it was just the fact that everyone got it because it was a movie tie-in game okay let's be real that's actually why but most people who say oh this part is hard clearly haven't gotten to the rest of the game, so I thought it would be cool to actually just do a playthrough of this. We're gonna have to go through it on difficult, because I grew up with it, why not? But, uh, let's do it. Let's start with the best line in the game. It starts. I hope Nathan Hale wins a lot of awards for that. Welcome to the Pride Land, stage one of, I believe, ten. We're playing on difficult, so unfortunately that means we have no lives and no continues, but we're gonna do our best to fix that. Simba can look up. Simba can look down. Simba can roll if you're holding diagonal down. And this is an incredibly important skill to know. Simba can also roar. It's pretty useless. I'm not gonna lie, that's probably his uh, least useful ability. Hanging on ledges, the other on the other hand, is going to be very important. So here we go, we're starting the Pride Lands. We've got enemies we already cannot jump on, porcupines. There are two ways to deal with them. One is roaring. However, if you notice that meter in the top left, that is your roar meter. If you take any damage, it empties and you have to let it fill back up. Roaring can stun enemies, so you can actually kill them. That's about the only thing it's good for, but honestly, most enemies that need to be stunned have a second way of dealing with them. In this case of this porcupine, it's waiting for him to turn around and rolling into him. Therefore, the roll is the roar is not all that needed. We've also got these bugs that literally explode. <laughs> I don't know why. They're not even in that much of the game. I think they're only in like two stages total, but yeah, be careful of those. Otherwise, most bug pickups you see like this one are for health. Oh, hey, look at that. The one up right there. Let's figure out how to get that. We're going to need that since we have none. And down there, this pizza looking sort of bug is extremely important because that is health. It has a health up exactly. Let's get that. With a careful jump. And there we go. Our health meter is on the right there. And now it's uh, a wiggly, two wiggly lines. Two and a half wiggly lines. Very, very important to have. All that health. There are, I think, five health extensions in the whole game. Four? You're gonna want them all. Let's get that one up. And now, you see this hole right here. You think there might be something going on here. Turns out there is. You cannot walk through it, but if you roll through it, you get sent to a secret area. And you are really, really gonna wanna know about those, because there are a lot of nice secrets hidden behind these, such as health and the circle of life. It means, in this case, not the Wheel of Fortune, but in fact, a continue. You're gonna wanna get those as often as you can. However, since we're on difficult, they basically amount to one extra life more than anything else. So they're not as helpful on this difficulty. If you're playing on easy or normal, you'll get the same amount of lives you start with anyways. I kinda glossed over this, but this is a checkpoint. Those are going to be also very important on the next stage more than anything, I feel. But otherwise, we've pretty much seen everything we need to see here. This bug is a bonus stage bug. There are two different bonus stage bugs. This one will get you ones with Pumba. And Timon will be the other one. And that's actually the better one. We want to find the Timon ones. We also want to find this. This is a roar up bug. Now our roar meter is more powerful. Still doesn't do much other than stun, but if we keep getting them, eventually the roar can do damage. However, the roar is not that important again, so 
If you miss them, that's fine. Some of them are pretty hidden. And now, our first boss fight, a hyena. Get used to fighting these guys a lot. They need to attack twice, and then when they're panting, you can go in for a hit. Since we're playing on difficult, they will take three hits to down. On normal, two, and on easy, one. First stage done. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. That's why you had to kill a lot of things on the way up here, Simba. Minigame one, bug toss. Plays Pumba. Timon's gonna drop a bunch of bugs, eat as many as you can. You get one belch to clear the screen. Don't eat any bad bugs. If you can eat 20 bugs, you get a little bonus sound effect. But you gotta be careful, because sometimes Timon likes to throw bad bugs. Timon will also throw down health extension bugs and uh, roar extension bugs if you're lucky, but man, it's not a good mini game for power-ups. When you get a good drop, it's extremely rare. That's a bad bug. Well, this is going better than I thought, but I still have not gotten a good bug yet. This is going exceptionally well. Wow, okay. Yeah. I love that sound effect. If you get more than 20 bugs eaten, you get that sound effect. Did you get anything for it? Fuck no. <laughs> no bonus out of that. Not a single drop was helpful. We just played a mini game for no reason. I think it might recharge your health if you took any damage, but I'm pretty sure you get that recharge at the beginning of a stage anyway, so that one was for funsies. Now, welcome to stage two, Roar at Monkeys. Or as it's actually known. Can't wait to be king. This is the stage most people grew up with saying that the game is way too difficult. Here's the thing. No. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. No, it's not. There's so many harder stages other than this. But I can see uh, this being bad. I can definitely see this. We're gonna die here at least once. Practice this. Grab this tail for a little bit of practice. And then when you're ready, get thrown into the air. You can stand on giraffes to kind of get a warning shot of how long it will be before they throw you away, but don't stay on them for too long, because all the other ones lead to the water, and of course, Simba can't swim. Because... cat? I guess. I'm just gonna chalk it up to that. I assume lions can swim to a point. I guess he's still a cub. All right. So the whole reason they said roar at monkeys is because certain monkeys will actually do different things. Specifically, these pink ones will actually change their position if you roar at them. The blue ones will always do the same thing. So if you go ahead and do that, they'll change what they're doing. And since we already we didn't change this one here, flip them around. So it's a little little puzzle. It's not too complicated at first. I'd argue the last one is a little tricky, but nothing too bad. But what people really complain about this stage is the ostrich riding. The ostrich ride is your turbo tunnel equivalent. If you crash into anything, you die. And the obstacles you have to jump over uh, sometimes blend in, as you might have noticed. The other problem is you have to double jump sometimes. But, you know, they telegraph it. They give you a little practice. It's not too bad. The worst is probably the fact that you cannot see that pink animal. Then there's also this part. Now, you know what? I'm talking myself into actually why people are hating this stage. It's, I feel bad because I don't think it's that bad, but I can see why and concede why the more I remember this. We now have to jump over water and make sure we do not drown. It can be tricky, but if you aim Simba specifically for the end of the tail, you'll actually grab it. If you grab the top, if you aim for the top part of the tail there, you'll actually miss. This one-up is one of the few one-ups in the game that actually constantly respawns because they, I think they knew they screwed up on this spot a little bit. This spot, I will concede, sucks. Because you have to make this jump over to that hippo. Now, there are two ways to do this. One, you can just land on the head. The other is aim for the nostril to grab. But it's a weird hitbox, so don't be surprised if I screw this up and die. See, aiming for the nostril basically grabbed the edge of the nose, and now we're fine. Another continue, kind of bring it up, get back up here, 
And we are done with that spot, thank goodness. But now, we have another ostrich scene with no arrows this time. You have to pay attention. And sometimes, they'll get sneaky with you. Double jump. Into a duck. Into another duck. Single jump. Double jump. We're into a single jump right away. And we're golden. No more ostrich rides. That part is what throws off a lot of people. Now I'm gonna chalk a lot of that up to, you know, we were kids. Like as a kid, that that might not be easy, whatever. Give them some slack. I'll, I'll concede that. But, uh, you know, if you go back as an adult, I don't think you're gonna find it as hard as you thought. Okay, so let's get, okay, good, I did get the checkpoint. For some reason I thought I didn't. As you've probably guessed, we now have to do a little bit a roaring. We gotta fix a couple things here. So let's see what we can reach first and foremost. And the answer really is just this one here. So let's flip you around and then go for a ride. Wrong rhino. Try this one. Whee! Okay. Now, we've been stopped directly in front of this monkey. You can tell what that means. However, the catch is we don't have a way back. Because the only rhino here doesn't do anything. Over there is the end of the stage. So we have to run all the way back over these floating logs. But if we're not careful, we will drown. Which is again why they put a one up there, one that doesn't respawn. So carefully jump back over and go for another ride. All the way back. And here's the one monkey we need to roar at. But, notice that bug over there. That blue bug over there is a Timon minigame. You want those. You extremely want those. So go back, grab that, roar at this monkey to make sure he uh, is different. And now, set this one back to normal. Hop in. And now we're done the stage. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Because that one had quite the arm on him. Welcome to Bug Hunt 3. This mini game is the best one to get. Because you get a ridiculous amount of one ups and continues if you are careful. Every 10 bugs you get is either a continue or a one-up. And as long as you avoid the Black Widows, you're gonna get a lot. Problem is, they are kind of everywhere. So it's very easy to accidentally just hit one. We got two continue or two one-ups out of that and maybe a continue or two. But now, the Elephant Graveyard, a stage I would actually argue is more challenging than Can't Wait to Be King because you have to worry about combat now. Combat is honestly the hardest part of this game. I would, I think that's an easy argument to make, honestly. There's only one other, there's one stage I would say is the absolute hardest and that's just because the stage is just straight up bullshit. But we'll get there much later. Let's run down here, grab a health bug. Go down here, and now notice this bug here. This bug is black. That means if we touch it, we take damage. A surprising amount of it, too. Now, there are three or four bugs that are supposed to do damage to you. Obviously, the Black Widow, very obvious. I feel like that's one of those bugs people just kind of know are bad. But uh, the rest of them are like dragonflies, actual flies, etc., etc. Uh, Timon minigame, or sorry, Puma minigame, by the way, we just got. Uh, for some reason, those black, those bad bugs, despite being mentioned in the manual, aren't actually in the main game. For some reason, they either forgot to put them in or they just got removed at some point. Okay, nothing down there, that's a pit. So really, just ignore like the one or two black bugs you see and you'll be fine. And you know, generally avoid them in the minigames anyways. Buzzards, 
I think are only in this stage. Which makes sense, but they are a pain in the ass. Since we're on difficult, three hits to jump on them to kill them. Yeah, you can hit multiple jumps, though, if you're lucky. This little wall can be knocked down with a nice roll, but don't go too far, otherwise you're gonna go right down in the pit. Oh, I think I might have missed something. No, actually, no, I get that later. Never mind, we're good. Okay. Let's deal with this buzzer, because we're about to do a lot of climbing. It's weird how methodical this game has become for me at this point. To the point where I just... I played it so much as a kid, it's so ingrained in my memory. Like, okay, to do this flip, you have to make sure you're facing the wrong way. Because if you're facing the right way, he won't grab automatically. It's like weird little mechanical things like that that I remember that... You really shouldn't? <laughs> It, it, it's like why I said that it feels like this is what dictated the way my path went down. Like, I feel like this is this game and Air of the Acrobat are the reasons I play a lot of difficult games. Or just played a lot growing up. Uh-oh. Okay, that's gonna get us in trouble. How much damage does that do? Ooh, that's a lot! Ooh! That's why there's two of these here, I guess. So yeah, don't touch those. But it's funny how much I'm just like, all right, do this, do this, and you will not get touched by this, this, this. There's a little health bug here in case you took more damage. Get ready to do some awkward climbing. No. Let's take you out, because we got to make a big jump here. If we can make this jump, you think there's nothing here, but again, roll through another wall. <coughs> and a roar bug is there. Apparently got stuck in my throat by the sounds of it. Good lord. One sec. Oh, all right. There we go. Simba, you enjoy that. I Somehow I, I doubt that butterfly is actually here at the elephant graveyard, but you know what? You do you, Simba. I'm also not going to lie. This animation is really smooth. So for those who don't know, this game was developed by Westwood Studios, which... Uh, most people know for Command & Conquer. This was made a little under a year before the Command & Conquer series started. But they did a collaboration with Virgin, which was the, the company that was releasing all these games and publishing them, and Disney Animation Studios. So Disney actually did all the sprite work for this game. If you have the, uh, I think, well, I forget what it's called exactly. I think it's the Lion King and uh, Aladdin collection or something like that on uh, Switch, on Steam, whatever platform. I think it's on pretty much all the major platforms. They actually have behind the scenes footage of the development of this game, and it's super fascinating what they did for this in Aladdin, like all using having the actual animators do all the animation, like sprite sheets and cells and everything. It's super fascinating. I wish I could show some of it, but like, check it out if you haven't. I'm sure it's all on YouTube at this point. All right, we have some death water right here, so if we touch it, we immediately die. So we have to not touch it, but I can't turn around and grab the ledge for some reason. So we have the race against the water. Jump back and forth as fast as you can. Just hold the direction you need. Hold up to get out of there. You can get up there for health, but um, I don't remember how exactly to get back in safely is the problem. Because touching the water at any point will kill you, even right now. And I don't think you can jump over this, so it's honestly more of a trap than anything. Alright, let's kill another vulture. Oh, there we go. We got a nice combo. You don't have to kill the vultures, but it does make your life easier. Just don't let them get off screen like that one just did. Why did You've taken three hits already. What the fuck? There we go. That was four. Weird. Alright. We're good. Oh, no, we're not good. Oh, we're actually going to die. Yep. <clears throat> Bummer. All right. Well, that's not bad. Dying in elephant's graveyard is not a big deal. It just sucks we have to do this part again. I knew I was going to do this without dying at least once, especially considering one of the later stages. But now we've got more health, so this should be bit more tolerable. No, 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 get off screen. No, get off screen. Oh, son of a crap. There we go. The vultures are so annoying. But then you also have to deal with these guys. Well, at least these you can skip. We died in front of health because of course we did. 
Vultures, roll into them until we start the damage combo. The fact that getting a hit makes your roar meter, like, empty out really makes it useless. Okay, one up. One up. I know we can get it from here. There we go. It's honestly recommended because that uh, elephant skin can rip. So you have to be very careful with that. Speaking of careful, we weren't. But we got a one up. Or sorry, we got to continue. We got a circle of life. Now, this jump can go wrong because this is a solid ceiling here, but you can sneak up there that way with it if you're careful. Don't fall down here or you're doing the entire stage over. That is where you started. All right, final boss rush. If we can get through these hyenas, we will be fine, which is why I'm taking so much damage. Apparently there's a way to actually glitch through the wall guarding you here, but I don't know how to do that. There's also a way to trick the hyenas to just jump straight up. And if you can do that, you'll avoid any damage, and oh my god, is it so helpful. The reason I'm being very cautious here is because I believe a third one spawns in. Nope, it didn't. All right, we're good. Let's get the hell out of here, because that is stage three. Meanwhile, Scar was watching and is now very sad that we're alive. Which means it's time for Bug Toss. Let's go, Pumba. Press any face button to belch when you need to. Ah, but I didn't in time. I did not, in fact, eat like a pig. All right, well, straight to the stampede. So how do you feel about Crash Bandicoot? Pretty good? Well, here's hoping, because it's time to avoid getting run over by wildebeests. This stage, not that bad. Actually, kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. You just have to realize where the hitboxes are on the sides, which can be tricky. Because uh, some of those enemies, they look like they're not gonna get you if you're standing right where we are right now, but they definitely will. Also, learn when to jump over the rocks. I think it's every after the fourth flash. Yeah, after the fourth flash, they become real. And then they do trolly shit like that, because of course they do. They're very sneaky, these Westwood developers. But generally, if you're staying uh, either where the rocks are or uh, on an actual edge of the screen, you have nothing to worry about. That guy's gonna hit me unless I dodge, but every other one usually avoids the side. You'd be surprised how far you can get in this stage by just standing on the, on the left or right side. Like we got, that was our first hit. And that's because sometimes it's just hard to tell if they're actually gonna get you here. But that's the stage. Kill him. Now Jeremy Irons wants us dead. Simba's exile. All right, our dad's dead. Uh, our uncle hates us, and the hyenas want us dead. So let's dodge falling boulders, because of course that's the obstacle here. And be careful with your platforming here, because there's a lot of things that will damage you. There's a lot of spike, oops, a lot of thorns on the ground. You have to be a very careful and methodical on this one. But, again, remember your rolling secret finding, because there's a lot of little secrets that you can get by rolling. And man, will they make your life... Okay, cool, that one just spawned out of midair. Neat! <laughs> They'll make your life less miserable, he says, as he gets rocked constantly. I hate the fact that I just said that. i take the shortcut, then. That got us the, the next Pumba bonus. That boulder, if it touches you, will instant kill you. That one, not so much. It still sucks. Oh shit, thorns. You just have to know to jump at that point, which I hopefully you've noticed that it's there because then your reflexes will kick in. Yeah, I think I'm getting hit by the boulder so much because I'm actually taking my time and just chatting about this. Normally I don't take my time. I just kind of run through and, oh, is it shooting me in the foot today? Ooh, ooh, death there, huh? Okay, all right, neat. We never got a checkpoint. Well, that sucks. I don't think the stage is short. 
All right, so here's what the stage looks like if you just kind of rush through then. This, I believe, also skips one of the boulder scenes. I think there's only like two scenes in this part. Just remember to jump uh, when you see the ledge here. Yeah, we, like, now that we're actually just, like, moving through the stage, nothing is touching us. Because, of course, that's how it works. And that time we got the jump right, because we actually jumped at the very end of the platform, which we somehow missed three times-ish. Time for some acrobatic lion flinging. And I think this is, yes, the checkpoint, finally. Okay. Don't have to worry as much now. Let's use our powerful roar! We ate a bug to get that powerful roar. I don't have to kill all these guys, I'm just clearing the way. And you cannot roll into the back of a, of a porcupine in case you were wondering. I figure that's pretty straightforward. One up hidden back here, again, roll through, but don't roll too far or you will fall off. They like to do that a lot. Now acrobat your way. Make sure to aim for the left edge of every sprite you see. Don't aim for the middle, aim for the edge. And with that, the stage is done. If you ever come back, we'll kill ya! Cheech Marin, why? All right, well, Pumbaa's here. Let's eat some bugs. No, I don't like that setup already. Ugh. We've already lost our first big belch. We got an infinitely better setup. I want to eat like a pig. Come on. Come on. Give me that line. As a kid, that was my favorite line in the whole damn game. We didn't make it. I ate like a pig. Never mind, we did. And now our celebration. We get to go to Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata is actually a hard stage for one reason. And even then, it's not that bad now used to it as an adult, but I can definitely remember as a kid getting stuck here. First off, branching paths. You can hold left or right as you're falling to take different paths. Next up, these giant spiders just kind of jumping around. They're kind of a nuisance. Ledge jumping. Be very careful with these. Well, these are not that bad. This is this is practice for later. Trust me, you're gonna want to know how to use those correctly. The real bummer thing is coming up here. So there's a one up there. Oops, I missed. Not really a punishment if you miss. Thankfully, the water slide will slide you back down. You cannot jump back up. Flipping backwards to get that one up off of this ledge. Oops, this ledge. Here we go. Uh, let me get the health, actually. Probably didn't need to, because here's the thing. We may actually be killing ourselves off here in a second. And you're probably wondering why, and that's because we've got a maze coming up here. This maze contains a health up. Unfortunately, I forgot which one I'm supposed to take. I think it's the first right and then the first left. So let's see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that was what? That was right, left, right, left? I think. But well, we got the health extension, which is thank goodness for that. Because that one's easy to miss. And you can't go back up there without dying. The downside is we took the harder path of this. Welcome to the actual challenge of this stage. The waterfall. You have to climb up these logs. Climb up this waterfall. By landing on the top of them platforming your way up. If you wait too long, they disappear and you fall into the actual water. But now, at least since we're back up here, I can show this to you now too. No, not that one. Uh, hold right here, and you actually get a shortcut. You gotta hold right all the way. So you have a little height advantage here now for the waterfall climb, which makes it a lot easier. Where we drowned was actually just barely off screen there, so not too bad. Just wait for a proper lineup. If you can't get logs that are actually gonna help you out, wait back on solid ground till you do get a pattern. The pattern can be very generous and it can be absolutely terrible, which it apparently really is right now 
Oh my god, please, give me a bit- Okay, this is not too bad. Okay. You can make more jumps than you think because of the way that logs are falling. You can get, grab a one up there. I don't know if that's a respawning one or not. But if you make your way all the way up here, you're safe. It's honestly really fun once you get used to it. But knowing that shortcut helps a lot more. The climb in from the water sucks. There's no way around that. Now here's a sneaky thing too. There's a there's a Timon mini game there, but there's also three Black Widow spiders. Ledge grab, and somehow you completely miss it. Hit the spiders and fall down. You're back where we were earlier. And now I think I can jump over this. Yes. Okay. So good. There's yeah more Black Widow spiders. Excellent. Or another secret wall. Not really a shortcut per se, because I believe you can get here anyways. I think the waterfall basically spits you out right there. Nope, spider's back. Next checkpoint, and now we go to the boss fight. Once I remember where the ground is. The boss fight is Donkey Kong. You need to piss off Donkey Kong. Yes, this is actually the fight. You have to let him throw, I guess, coconuts? Boulders? I'm not sure what exactly what they're supposed to be. They look like boulders. Paused here, but they look like, I guess they might be dirt clods. They could be poop. It could be poop. Simba's real Jasmine jumping on poop. But Donkey Kong will be uh, able to be damaged when he goes for the physical attack on the bottom. I believe you can also roll into these things to send them back at him. But I don't normally do that, because I've honestly found the uh, waiting for the him to get mad way easier. But move fast. And you know what? Let's try the... Is it rolling that does this? I think. Yes, it is! Holy shit! Wow! Dude, I don't think I ever did that as a kid. I think that's actually easier. The problem is now we got to make this climb here without getting hit. Also, don't roll too close because, uh, oh shit, we screwed up. We don't have enough health to climb back there, too. If we get up there and get near him, he's gonna smack us. And DK's got one hell of a smack. Yeah. No, no, wait. Oh, oh we got an opening. Oh, we're good. Unbelievable. I thought we were done. All right. That's the boss. Bye bye, ape boy. Hakuna Matata. It means no worries. Just let the ape kill himself. All right, let's earn some more one-ups and continues. I think we're at a point where we should be good. We have what, seven lives, eight? Uh, the Black Widow hitboxes are way bigger than you expect, so be very careful jumping around them. Can't grab that one. The controls are just simply jump. There's no run button. Timon will book it for you anyways. Uh, the bottom path is usually the safest, but obviously there's more but I also don't even know if I can get past that. Ooh, we might be in trouble here now. I don't think there's any more moves we can make without risking it. Oh, we're out of time anyways. Okay. Well, we didn't do too bad. And now that Hakuna Matata's happened, we're an adult! We're a big boy lion! As adult Simba, we have new moves. We can actually attack now. We can duck and attack, attack by just standing, and we have a maul attack. We can also do some attacking in midair, and if you hold down an attack around certain enemies, you have an extra move, which the game doesn't really tell you about, but it's really fucking important to know. And our roar is an actual roar, but you will probably notice our roar meter got reset. Apparently, growing up, we forgot how to roar. We've also lost the ability to roll, so there are no more secrets to find through rolling. However, now the game is more focused on combat. But this is also the jankiest part of the game. We can still ledge climb. We can still flip. We can trim the leaves. But now we got a bigger hitbox, basically. Also, unfortunately, now, anytime we get a, a collectible, we don't get our cool anymore. 
Instead, we just get a little sparkle noise, which is really lame, honestly. As, as little sense as would make for adults, someone who yelling, cool, it kind of adds charm. Sparkle noise, not nearly as good. All right, we now have a challenge room. The challenge is to stand here, duck, and hit the attack button, and hope that you're feeling patient. Because if you duck, for some reason, these enemies will not hit you. I don't know why, I guess their attack is just high enough. But Rafiki shows up and opens the way. You can't go through that otherwise. But any path above, you should probably check for health or annoying little tiny chimpanzee. No, those aren't chimpanzees, what are you talking about? Tiny little monkeys that will actually throw uh, rocks at you. Well, rocks because Disney wouldn't let them throw poop, probably, if I had to guess. If I had to guess. Speaking of rocks, don't touch this. If you are too close to this boulder, it will kill you, but you have to break it. So stand that far away and it won't kill you. If you touch the boulder, even when it's rolling the opposite way at all, it will kill you. Oh, these guys. All right. Notice how acrobatic Simba still is. <laughs> I forgot how violent that animation is, though. Jesus! Work it, Simba. All right. We need to clear up here first. Notice the circle of life just... Ooh, 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 ooh! You're dead. Notice the circle of life right here. Get on this while it's still in a vine. Grab that, and now carefully free this one. This one can kill you, and it sucks when that one kills you. Because you're like, oh, I'm safe. I'm standing on the ground. No. No, you are not. Notice that the checkpoints are now the adult Simba. Or as the movie would say, the king is returned. Which we will also hopefully not be hearing in the game because that is the sound effect for using a continue in this game. We are at eight lives right now, which is actually the maximum. Uh, the game counts from zero to eight. Nine does not show up at all. So, uh, but it also doesn't count past eight. So unfortunately, even though if we pick any more extra lives from here on out, they don't show up on our life counter. I actually believe that if you are at max lives, one-ups don't show up. That might actually only be if you have the infinite life cheat on, I forget. I don't know why, but as a kid, I always called this like the goalie swipe, because I, I think the size of his paw and the way it moves makes him look like a goalie stick. That also might be the most Canadian sentence I've said in a Let's Play video, which is kind of impressive at this point. Boulder. Run. You cannot let go of the left button. You will die. It is stupid. You have no time on that one. You have to react immediately. Okay, let's grab some health. Eric, listen to the, you've, you've, you've heard it a bit already in the stage, but that's so weak compared to like the cool. As cheesy as it is, I really do feel like that is kind of a part of the game. It kind of belongs, per se. Uh, let's... That. I'm trying to remember if I've missed anything. We saw a, a, a roar bug earlier. But we can't get it just yet. You need to stop. There we go. Oh. Get out of here. Sneak under this boulder. Now we can get that roar bug. There we go. Our roar meter is pretty much back where it was before. I think it actually might be a little bit lower still, but. Another boulder, stay far away from it. This one's slower so you can accidentally run into it. And I sure did that as a kid. I sure did. There's no way to get around that one. Screwed that one up. All right. Our third enemy dispenser. Slash Rafiki's test. Rafiki really wants you to know about ducking. To be fair, I could be showing you off other 
attack moves, but let's be real, this is the most effective by far. This game has a lot of fluff in it, which is sad per se, but uh, sometimes the most direct methods are the best and ducking and slashing is gonna do you a lot of good. Okay, Dad. I'm gonna send my friend out to eat some bugs first, though. Gotta get more one-ups. Gotta get more circles of life. Carefully jump around. At this point, I don't even think we really need to do these anymore. I think we only get one more chance to do them anyways. But why not enjoy that while we can? Give Timon and Puma their time in the sun and time in the spotlight because I don't believe they really get to do anything else in the game otherwise. The fact that they don't even show up on the Akuna Matata stage is kind of a sin. Oh, okay. Okay. Cracking, cracking my knuckles because it's time for Be Prepared. Be Prepared is actually 100% the worst stage in the game. The stage is garbage. Now we might be okay because we've gotten uh, a bunch of health extensions, but there's lava that drips down. There's a lot of enemies to fight. And there's these, the Lava Geysers. They do a lot of damage. And they're usually combined with these assholes, the bats, which you will learn to loathe. If your roar is strong enough, I believe you can just scare them off, but I just don't know how good ours is at the moment. Also, the hyenas are here, but at this point, uh, this is the part of the, the movie where they're kind of weak from hunger, so they're not terrible to fight. They're just bad to fight in numbers, which I guess, Technically the hyena way, huh? Oh, hello! Hi! Get out of here. Let's see here. I think there's... I think this wall has... Uh, see, yeah, if you look, you can see the, the, the paw going through the texture. I think this is the wall I need. I think at the end of this one you can, oops, go through the wall. Hang on. Oh, uh oh. Yep, yeah, okay. There we go. Roar bug, health bug. All right, cool. We're good. And even another health bug. There we go, back at full health. Good, because we've got a lot of awkwardly positioned enemies here again. Now, you'll notice they're trying to go for this mall attack as well, and you can actually combat them in that and do a sick flip. You can actually, like, judo throw enemies. But I'm not doing that because it actually usually leads to you taking a lot of damage. And this stage, as I've mentioned numerous times, sucks ass. Here, I'm going to show you this move, though. Uh, the kill your enemy move. Very helpful. No, uh, there's a pounce move I'm trying to do. You need, we well, don't need to know it, but God does it help the fight with uh, the final boss. Right now, okay, which one are we going for? Uh, I'm gonna be stupid. So there's the checkpoint right there. Over here is our last mini game. Up there are some stalag tights, I think. Yeah, because it's hold on tight for falling. Uh, whichever one you break will destroy a platform below. You need to do a couple swipes at them, but obviously you have to avoid the lava for a little bit. I think it's three swipes. There we go. It also makes a platform for you to fall on and float through the water. Problem is, this skips the checkpoint directly above us, so we have to, like, not screw this up. And, of course, the first thing we're going to do is screw this up.
We have to ride through this lava. Uh, oh, there's the pounce we were talking about, by the way. The multi-hand slap actually is an incredible move, and it's great for clocking damage on enemies. Oh yeah, no, there's no one up here, because we actually have max one-ups. Look at that. Damn, we actually made it through. Nice. Now here's the downside. Now I believe this is a, a boulder spawner. Yep. So run. Oh god, and we got caught on the ledge. That happens a lot more than I care to admit. And since we skipped the checkpoint, we're doing the stage all over again. The one plus now is that any one-ups we missed are back, and we still have the credit for the actual uh, bonus stage. So we do get our last bonus stage as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and just skip ahead at this point, because you've you've seen all of this, and I hate this room anyway, so I'm, I'm cool to be quiet and focus on this one. And I'll see you on the other side. All right, we're back. Not too bad. I was thinking about it on the way here. Uh, I believe this is the only stage in the game that... Oh! That will kill you when a trap falls on you. Simba's sprite is too big. Uh, third time's a charm. Okay, so I had to show that off at some point because that is that is very relevant. You have to be very careful when you're swiping at this. Just move back because they will instant kill you even if they graze your paw. It's rough. So yeah, there was supposed to be a one-up over on that path originally, but it didn't spawn because we were at max lives. Now we got a checkpoint. We can't reach it anyways. It That's just forever lost to us, but I would also... Mu oh, hey. Nice. Uh, I'd also much rather make some progress. So let's... Roar. Well, it woke them up at least. Well, woke up all of them, apparently. Good lord. Okay. It's a good thing to... Getting rid of those as soon as you can is actually pretty helpful. So, because we took the top path, now there's going to be a platform to us to ride here. But the downside is, now we have to deal with the bats again. We did actually surprisingly good last time we rode through here. And now there's another one-up to reward us as well, but going for that one-up usually gets us tricked by that guy. We have to rush through here again, which we can just ignore that guy. We have to fight one of them, otherwise we're going to just despawn our platform. Another one up. Oh! No, 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 no! Okay, we're back to Max Lives again. We just have to be careful of that damn ledge there. That damn ledge is what screwed us up, because we need to land on the ledge directly below it. So we do need to turn around immediately. Do it too fast, you catch the ledge and die. Do it too late, you fall in the lava. So we gotta get that sweet spot. It could take us a couple tries. Let's do it. Got it. There we go. Oh, thank goodness. So dirty. I hate that spot. We get our little glitchy jump for victory. And some more awkward platforming. When you're on a ledge, you can actually just tap down to let go. But you'll notice he flicks himself a little bit, so you gotta be careful. Oh, right. This one's not nearly as bad, though. Because there's no uh, racing this time. It's just get up there. Oh, God. I. Oh, I'm stuck in pounce. That's why. That sucks. We need as much health as we can get. Because we are at. Oh, right. We're at the boss of the stage. The boss of this stage, the stage that I believe, I, I might have, I think I was saying this and got cut off earlier. I think this is the only stage in the game that does not actually relate to any time in the movie. This is technically, I suppose, to be the cave where Be Prepared, the song happens, I believe. But it's supposed to show how wrecked the world is. I don't remember this part in the movie. And I definitely don't remember this. Here's the boss. Bunch of geysers. Geysers that are uh, hitting the ceiling and making boulders fall down. You just have to survive. Just don't get hit. Easier said than done, obviously. What you need to do is generally just stand on these uh, geysers. And for the most part, you'll be safe. The The rocks fall in random spots, so you still do need, do need a bit of dodging. However, after X amount of time, I think it has to do like three or four loops. Eventually, tops will start landing on the geysers. 
If those land on you, you die instantly and have to do this over again. It is just a patience game. Nothing else. Just wait, hope that you have enough health. Wait for all the geysers to get topped, except for this last one. Let it go off a couple times. And ride that sucker to victory. And our prize is again. Simone dodging death yet again. At this point, uh... I don't think we need any of these. I think we're honestly really good. Might as well do it anyways. We're here. Let's give, let's give Timon his time. Puma got a bunch of time too. He ate like a pig at least twice. I just, I'm just so sad we never got any power-ups from from Puma's mini game. So it was essentially just a waste of time. Ooh. 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 We almost finished that loop. Welcome to the Pride Lands. They're uh, a little messed up. Simba's return. How do you feel about combat? Because you're about to be doing a lot of it. It's also a maze. So how do you feel about combat mazes? We're gonna take, uh, well I have max lives, so I don't need to do this one. So this path here has a one-up in it. This path here is also not the correct one, but it has something we want. A lot of hyenas we need to kill, hang on. Get out of here. All right, now that we've killed all the hyenas in a room, we can actually take these caves. You cannot go in them otherwise. Uh, we need... Which one is it? I think it might be the one on the ground, but I'm gonna try this one. It was the one on the ground. Crap. Okay. This will really test your pace, your spacing, rather. Uh, your positioning with these enemies. If you stay far enough and pin them against a wall with your swipes, they'll never hit you. And you need to get used to it because all enemies respawn! So if you take the wrong path in a maze, you have to clear the maze again. I should probably show you the pounce properly too. We're gonna be using it a lot in the next stage, but... Here, I'll try to show the pounce. If you jump onto the head of an enemy and hold down, you'll do, you'll do this pounce move, which does a ridiculous ridiculous amount of damage. It is the best move in the game, and it's not even mentioned in the manual. There's, I don't think there's anything that really mentions that move. But God, does it help with all the fights. See? One combo. We came here because behind this rock wall, if you jump, is the last health extension. We have full health. We're at max power. I don't even think there's a ro any more roar extensions. I think we're at max roar too. Roar is kind of useless though. Well, what's not useless is pouncing. My God. If you want to try this move too, you can do a sick throw. It's cool. It's fucking cool. And you need to know how to do that to beat the game. But it is otherwise useless in regular combat. Here, let's top off her. Uh, no. Oh, am I gonna remember the right way? So this is the way to start. It starts pretty obvious in the correct way. This is just single paths, and then it eventually it gets a bit more tedious. that one up oh watch out for the kickback yeah so when you when you're pounced on someone they will kind of throw you back a little bit as if you got hit by an enemy like Castlevania Ninja Gaiden style uh, it can throw you in the spikes spikes are not insta kill thank goodness but they are a lot of damage and this is essentially a marathon in a way okay if we're lucky and you position yourself correctly they'll just jump over your head and get themselves stuck in the corner making your life a lot easier Ooh, okay, four caves. I believe these two, I know this one for sure, uh, loop. So two of these loop, and this one leads to a one-up if you want to do it. 
This one, I believe, leads back to the beginning of the maze. So we're gonna take the first door, which is the correct one. Okay, one door, so we're fine here. All right, so far so good. This is the one I think we're gonna goof up on. I tend to forget this one. One of these brings us back to start. One of these moves us forward. Uh, left. Oh, thank goodness, correct one. All right. And in fact, I think this is actually the final room. I think this is actually the exit. Yep, sure, it looks like it. So once we kill all the hyenas in this room, stage is done. No bonus minigame in that stage as far as I'm aware of, which means we're now at the final stage. Pride Rock, which is on fire, which means it's time to fight Scar. Scar, you have to slap him in the face a lot. It's kind of cathartic, honestly. However, he takes a lot of hits and he can block. That's the problem. That little grimacing face he's making is him blocking your attacks. It kind of sucks to fight him a little bit, unless you know about pouncing. Pouncing is a little tricky to do on Scar, but if you do it, it's really the best strategy. Usually if you see him like rubber band around, that means you've done it right. There we go. All right, we clocked enough damage on him. He's gone. And now for some acrobatics. How do you feel about platforming puzzles? Actually, the game just spared us on that one and erased it immediately. I don't know why it does that sometimes. But fire will start from lightning, even though this is fucking rock. And we need to avoid it accordingly. If we need health, you can flip over here. It's one of the few health pickups, but uh, if you want to actually go the way you're supposed to, uh, you're going up. So, I don't know if I ever really mentioned it, but the way I've always found the, the flipping mechanic to be the easiest is that the game actually kind of auto-guides you towards it. Here, let's let's show this. Uh, this one we're going to need to move a little bit for, forward for, but this next one, you can just jump and just give a light tap and you'll be there. Like, a lot of these, they auto-guide you towards, or they require very little push on the controls. As long as you're remembering to aim for the leftmost part of these ledges, you're gonna nail them. Oh. Dodge that. We are on. Uh oh. Yeah, get ready for a bunch of those. These little tiny ledges, do you remember the one that we found to dodge that boulder in Simba's Exile? That's the, the reminder of what you need to grab. Oh boy. Time for round two, Scar. Let's go. So, uh, again, if you see his face kind of like rubber around, it's basically doing the animation that what happens when you pounce on him. And if you do that, it goes really quick. If you need health, and I believe this is the last pickup in the game, it's right there by climbing that ledge. Because otherwise, from here on out, what you got is what you're stuck with. Whoop, fuck, of course. We don't get any checkpoints in this stage. Pride Rock, you have to do in one shot, which can be mean considering some of the traps. This part right here is one of those traps, the fucking ledge maze. You need to figure out the best way to dodge the fire. And that usually involves going in weird spots like this and falling down a lot. So having a good account of where up and down are help a lot. There we go. And sometimes just jumping around will just put out a fire for no fucking reason. And it's the way you need to go. So, uh, 
have fun making sense of that. Alright. We're at the top of Pride Rock. Just like we left it. Let's do it. Final boss fight. Let's go, Scar. Hold down and attack to do that pounce. Watch out for little slaps of the face. You can also do this for a little bit, but eventually he just learns to duck it and block it. We are looking to clock as much damage as we can on Scar right now. There's uh, not really a set amount of pounces you need to do, but a lot. Just The answer is a lot. Just do a lot of pounces. You'll know you're actually got it if it gets to a point where he just walks away from blocking and just starts panting. He's not at that point yet, because he's still at the slapping you in the face part. He might, he's there now, okay. So now, walk up to him, and wow, he just stays in that, huh? Okay. Walk up to him, press X. Give him a throw. Keep doing that. Whoa, oh, right, I forgot he can jump on you. Uh, X lets, X lets you get him off you. Scar, you're not in a good spot here, huh? You're not gonna you're not gonna cooperate. You're really not gonna cooperate, huh? He's gonna make me throw him the other way. Alright, well, fine. I'm gonna throw you the other way. I don't care what part of Pride Rock I throw you off, I'm just gonna throw you off! You can also just kind of just keep slapping him. It'll make him walk. Get him where you need. Get him near the ledge. And once he's close enough, turn around. And make watch him walk away. Cool. Alright, neat. Get off the fucking... This is the most problem I've ever had with Scar. And it's not... The actual hard part. This is supposed to be the easy part. What the fuck? Come on, man. Keep going. It's like herding sheep. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! So he's not doing damage to me. I just can't get him in the right spot. Ugh, fine. Come on. I legitimately did not think this was going to take this long. Alright, that should be close enough. Don't throw myself off. All right, get out of here. Folks, SGG. We've thrown our uncle to the hyenas, which are off screen. So, you know, we get the much better implication that we threw him to his death, splatted his brains everywhere. And now we just roar at fire to make it rain. Because Disney magic. And now, all the ruined Pride Lands will become much better. Simba went on to rule by himself because for some fucking reason, Nala just didn't show up in the game at all. It's all on Simba's shoulders now. There he is. No one else helped. Only Simba did this. <laughs> so stupid. Well, that's it. That's the Lion King. It's not that bad, huh? It's really not that bad. I think the old, like I said, the really bad stage is uh, be prepared. That stupid volcano stage just sucks because of all the insta kill traps in it. Because if you fall in the lava, obviously you're dead too. Oh, hang on a second. We gotta get, we gotta get that last line. What's our last quote of the game, Lion King? What do you got for us, Westwood? Everything the light touches is our kingdom. All right, everything the light touches our kingdom, followed by an explosion. Sure, <laughs> why not? That's it. That's the game. That's my childhood right there. Uh, don't expect an Arrow the Acrobat playthrough. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. Out of those two games, Arrow was way harder. Simply because every stage was a maze, and every stage usually insta-killed you a lot. 
still have a soft spot for that game, though, in my heart. In fact, if you watch my streams on the regular, you've heard a sound effect from Arrow on the regular as well. That sound effect is actually the one-up icon, one-up jingle from Arrow the Acrobat, and I've used it for a lot of timers and stuff over the years. But uh, Lion King, like I said, special place in my heart, and it's definitely the game that kind of solidified my love of difficult games from the era. And it's probably also why I don't say it's that bad. Like, playing... Okay, let's, let's look at it this way. If we play through the game on easy instead, uh, you would start with, I think, eight lives. It might be infinite lives, even. Uh, high amount of continues. Hyenas die in one hit. A lot of enemies die pretty easily. Like, it's not that bad. The real issue is all the insta-kill stuff. And that is fair. I've heard reports, I don't know if this is actually true, it could just be hearsay, that Westwood uh, got pressure put on them from either Disney or Virgin because they wanted to make sure this game wasn't beaten in just a simple rental. Because let's be real, this video is an hour-ish, a little bit less than that, so uh, it's a pretty short game. So, supposedly, they upped the difficulty of stage two. And I can see that. Cool. Because, like, other than, let's see, other than Elephant Graveyard cool. and Be Prepared, the rest of the game's not that bad. But a lot of kids only got to Can't Wait to Be King and couldn't get through that. And I guess that's where it got its reputation from. If you figure out Can't Wait to Be King, it's really not that bad. And even then, I still think Can't Wait to Be King's not that bad. You just have to notice those stupid animals that are low low down. And get the timing for the double jump right. Uh, but that's it for this. Almost. You, I mean, I, it's hard to do this kind of bit when you can just look at how much is left of the video. But uh, we're going to do one more fun thing here. Cheat codes. Because this one's got a fun one. Go to the options menu and type in on your controller. I'm using a Super Nintendo controller here. If you're playing through the Steam one, it may be different, so just know what the Super Nintendo layout is. Uh, in this case, jump is B and roar is A, and R was not used. It's one of the shoulder buttons. So type in B, A, R, R is an R in the shoulder buttons, and Y, and you get the berry menu. The berry menu, supposedly, named after developer Barry Green, has two things in it invulnerability on and off, so if you're invincible or not, so you take no damage, and a level select. Oh, right, there's three settings in invulnerability code. So there's off, obviously, so normal. On, where you just can't die unless you fall in a pit. And easy, which I believe is what I was conf confusing easy mode with, because that means you get infinite lives. And of course, level select here. So we can go through the Pride Lands, Can't Wait to Be King, Elephant Graveyard, Stampede, Simba's Exile, Hakuna Matata, Simba's Destiny, Be Prepared, Simba's Return, Pride Rock, and the mini game. So Bug Toss, Bug Hunt 1, 2, and 3. And it loops back. However, in this menu is a second cheat code. And I might have screwed up already because I've pressed a bunch of buttons here. But if you type R A A B. I screwed up. Yep, I can't get it here. Hang on. So give me a second. All right, turns out I'm stupid. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> B-A-R-R-Y on this menu. Pick whatever stage you want. Let's go to... Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's actually just go to default stage. Uh, on this screen, type R-A-A-B. Cool. I thought a menu came up on this screen. Turns out it doesn't. Cool. Go to start. It starts. And Simba is now upside down. His jumps will be reversed, and everything is completely messed up, and it makes platforming really, really weird. <laughs> but it kind of rules at the same time. It, uh, it does make platforming and playing through this game honestly kind of a headache. And, as you can see, uh, some enemies will react like they're walking above you, so it does change how you fight certain enemies. It's kind of a cool extra code to actually play through this game a different way. Apparently, this code is also supposed to be related to another dev. Uh, Rob Povey is what I'm seeing on, on TV tropes. I don't know if this is actually accurate. 
Cool. And apparently the RAB code is actually the code for the Genesis version, but it does work here for this mode. But the cool thing is this. Set the code on again, go to the stampede. It starts. It starts. And now you're doing the stampede upside down. So this brings on an extra layer of difficulty. At least you would think. Until you realize they can't actually hurt you down here. So actually, it, it's actually a cheat code to make this way easier. So here's where we are. Jumping will actually make us take damage. I think the bull, no, not even the boulders. But the reason, <laughs> the reason I picked this, I part of me wanted to do this as like a challenge run through the game, but it, it sucks doing an upside down run of the Lion King. It's actually really challenging to get used to. And I don't even know how you do any of the, the ending. I legitimately do not know how you fight Scar. Oh, actually, no. No, that might be incorrect. So here's the reason I picked specifically Stampede. A, to show you that you're invincible during this. And B, because it also flips Scar sprites. <laughs> I don't know why. But it fucking rules. Ow. Cool. Ow. Uh oh, oh, well, I think we're stuck here now. No, 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 we can still, we can still get out if we can figure out Ow. where to go. Ow. All right. Even this screen is upside down. Okay, one last thing to try out, cause now I'm curious. I might have screwed that up. Nope. Okay, okay. Uh, uh how does this fight go now? Oh. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if I can defeat Scar though, is the only thing, because I can't, like, throw him. Oh, I can do the pounce. Oh, I can do pounces, right. Sort of. Yeah, I can still, I can actually still pounce. It's just because of the animation, I can't be in the right spot for it. So yeah, I'm not sure if, okay, well I can do that part at least. It's the throw, oh, well, all this bullshit too. Oh God, nope, oh no. Actually, I don't even need to fight you guys, screw that. Can I run through this? I can't if it disappears. I, now, I'm legitimately cute. This is one thing I definitely did not practice. I kind of wish I turned on invincibility now, actually. Yeah, I think. I'm gonna try. I'll, you know what, legitimately, I'm gonna cut ahead. Let's see what happens. All right, I made it here. I had to turn on invincibility because uh, it turns out, first off, I don't have all my health extensions. And secondly, when you can't quite tell where you are jumping, it is a little tricky to avoid damage. So I can still pounce and do like the extra damage I need. I just don't know how to do the throw. Maybe if he gets, maybe in a stun animation, it will let it count? I don't know. Cause I technically do have a presence of, on, on the above plane there, but. Let's knock enough damage to get him stunned. Cause if we can throw him, then we've got this. And then that means an entire run upside down is doable. And a huge pain in the ass, but doable. Like we can, it's hard to do the pounce, but it is doable. Okay, I think he's in stun lock. No, he's still swiping. Okay. Oh my God, it's doable. No fucking way. No fucking way. Oh, this is fucking rules. Oh, that fucking rules. Holy shit. Oh my god. 
Oh, that's a gift to myself. Oh my god. I'm, I've never done that before. I never tried. That fucking rules. Oh my god. I want to see. I bet you there is a upside down run on YouTube. If there's not, this is your chance, internet. I'm going to quickly do it while this is loading. Not see it. I it'll be edited in if there is one. Cool. Oh yeah, there's a, they, someone did the ending of Upside Down Mode before back in 2011. So I know I'm not. I knew it wasn't gonna be the first, but I'm a little sad. This is the the right way. But hopefully you guys enjoyed Lion King. As you can see, uh, not that bad unless you're playing it completely upside down. <laughs> then it sucks. Uh, but this is a lot of fun. This is part of my childhood. This game defined my childhood. And I mean, obviously, I was the right age for the movie as well. So I love the movie. But, uh, hopefully you had a little bit of fun. Hopefully you try it for yourself. It's available on, nowadays, you can get on Steam, Switch, whatever, along with uh, the Virgin Aladdin game, the Genesis one. So, check it out if you want. It's not a bad retro game. It does not quite deserve the rep it has. See y'all next time. I ain't like a pig!